Good morning. Welcome to Wednesdays in the Word. I'm Evan Gittner, pastor at our Shepherd Lutheran Church. It is a, a joy to be with you. We're going through 60 essential Bible stories. Today we're looking at Jesus feeding the 5,000. So you can find this in all four Gospels. It's one of the very few stories that tell us about Jesus that are in all four Gospels. So we got the crucifixion. Uh, that's in all four Gospels, the resurrection, um, all four Gospels. And uh, here's one of the other stories that's in all four Gospels, Jesus feeding the 5,000. I'm going to read it to you now from Matthew chapter 14. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went to shore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed the sick. Now it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. They took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over, and those who ate were about five thousand men, besides the women and children. So, feeding the five thousand, uh, the five loaves and two fish. Where does this story take place? That is both in terms of timeline and location a part of the story. In terms of timeline, John the Baptist has been killed. Um, at that time, I'm reading now earlier in the chapter, at that time Herod the Tetrarch heard about the fame of Jesus and he said to his servants, this is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work through him. So Herod the Tetrarch is not the same guy as Herod the Great that was in the story at the birth of Jesus. Remember how the wise men came to Jerusalem, they were looking for the newborn king to worship him, and Herod the Great spoke to the, the men of Jerusalem and found out that it was going to be Bethlehem. He sent the wise men off onto Bethlehem, but said, come back and tell me. And uh, then the wise men went back a different way, having been warned in a dream, and Herod the Great, enraged and jealous, uh, ordered the killing of the innocents in Bethlehem. This guy in Matthew uh, 14 is not the same guy as Herod the Great. You'll notice this uh, title, Herod the Tetrarch. That means Herod the Quarter. Now, it's not like he's a quarter the size of Herod the Great, but that he is ruling a quarter of the empire that Herod the Great had. After Herod the Great died, his kingdom was split up into four, and each of the rulers of those four were known as Tetrarchs. By the time of Jesus, Herod the Tetrarch is sometimes called King Herod, and that's how he's going to be called towards the uh, Holy Week. And Pontius Pilate and is there in Jerusalem, and he hears that Jesus is from Galilee, and he's a subject of King Herod, so he has King Herod visit him. And kind of, if you remember, um, in Jesus Christ Superstar, the, the song... Um, it's kind of, kind of a rocky rock sound um, because Herod the king wants to see something great. All right, why am I talking about Herod the Tetrarch? Because this is the timeline. Herod the Tetrarch, he has ordered the death of John the Baptist, but now Jesus is rising up in power and there is a threat to the life of Jesus. Jesus is wonderfully adept at... Uh, moving between caring for the people and not getting caught into unnecessary entanglements with the power politics of his age. I think that's, that's pretty special for us to understand about the ministry of Jesus, that he, he never unnecessarily got entangled in the politics of his age, and he always focused on how to care for the people. So, I said where this story takes place is important, both in terms of timeline and in geography. All right, so geography. Now, there's not a lot of details in Matthew, but you put the details we get from all four Gospels, and commentators think that 
the location of this deserted place that Jesus went to is noteworthy, not just because it's a deserted place, but because it's outside of the boundaries of where Herod the Tetrarch's authority is. So Jesus moves away from the danger, gathers the crowds, makes sure that the crowds aren't in danger. So he moves away from the danger of Herod the Tetrarch, the crowds follow him, and while he's there with the crowds, he makes sure that the crowds aren't in danger either. So he's not about just getting out of politics to save his own skin. He's getting out of the politics to make sure that the whole crowds of the sick and the, the hungry also are not endangered by his work. So uh, Herod the Tetrarch wants to arrest Jesus, but Jesus gathers with a bunch of people just outside that boundary. And so we get this detail, remember, now from Matthew 14, verse 13. Now when Jesus heard this, that's talking about the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. He wanted to pray. He wanted to grieve. Um, but there is also ministry that's going to take place, and the crowds follow him. Now let's look a little bit of detail in the story. He's teaching throughout the day. It's evening. The disciples want to send them away. Um, they say this is a desolate place, the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. This is a time when the disciples look at a situation, see it's impossible, and say, Jesus, we have to send them to someone else for help because we can't do this. But Jesus said they need not go away. You give them something to eat. So Jesus is directing the disciples from their gifts to provide for the resources of the people. But the disciples look at their resources and imagine it could never be enough. All we have is five loaves and two fish. That's not enough. It's never going to be enough. No matter how much we imagine it, it's never going to be enough. That impossibleness of using our resources to make a difference. The world is just in too much trouble. I can never make a difference. Send them away. But then Jesus said, bring them to me. And then he orders the crowds to sit on the grass. He takes the five loaves and the two fish. He looks up to heaven and there's a blessing. He breaks the loaves and he gives them to the disciples. The disciples give them to the crowds. There are troubles in this world. How can there ever be enough of us to make a difference? But we go to God. We say, God, take what I am, just as I am, without one plea, as the hymn would say. Use me. And through the Lord, there's a multiplication. That is how the impossible becomes possible. Through the Lord, there's a multiplication. They all ate, were satisfied. They took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over, and those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. There was a great gathering. 5,000 men, besides women and children. It's just a wonderful gathering of, of teaching and healing and feeding. Immediately after this, uh, the disciples get into a boat. They go to the other side, and while he dismissed the crowds, he then went out to by a mountain to himself to pray. So Jesus had begun the day thinking he was going to go to a desolate place to pray. He finishes the day by finding an opportunity to do that. Our personal lives of devotion may get interrupted. We do what's in front of us, and then we find our way back to doing what we may need to do for ourselves. Uh, there is room enough in God's kingdom for us to both care for people and care for ourselves. It is not a, a binary decision, either care for people or care for yourself. There is in this story the demonstration that both are possible. It just may take you longer than you thought. So 60 essential Bible stories. Today our story was the story of the feeding of the 5,000. You can find it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, the five loaves and two fish. Uh, today is June 28th, Irenaeus of Lyon, a pastor, is the, on the commemorations calendar. So we're going to just uh, read a little bit about this guy. Irenaeus, he, uh, he lived 130 to 200. So he's just a, a generation after Jesus. And he is believed to be a native of Smyrna, uh, which is in modern-day Turkey. He studied in Rome, and he became a pastor in Lyon, France. 
around the year of our Lord 177, while Arrhenius was away from Lyon, a fierce persecution of Christians led to the martyrdom of his bishop. Upon his return back to Lyon, he became the bishop. Among his most famous writings is a work where he condemned heresies, especially Gnosticism, which denied the goodness of creation. In opposition, Arrhenius confessed that God had redeemed his creation through the incarnation of the Son. Arrhenius also affirmed the teachings of the scriptures handed down to and through him as being normative for the church. The scriptures norm the church. They, they give the boundary box for the church. And uh, Arrhenius was one of the leaders of uh, that age that helped reaffirm and encourage people to let the scriptures be their guiding hand and how to um, see God and see the world. Let's pray. Almighty God, you upheld your servant Arrhenius with strength to confess the truth against every blast of vain doctrine. By your mercy, keep us steadfast in the true faith, that in constancy we may walk in peace on the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God's blessings be with you. Have a great day in the Lord.